up, guys? Dave Van Auken here, podcast 202. The red light is on. I got undefeated bare knuckle FC superstar Drew Angel Core. My man, Drew, how you doing, brother? Doing great, man. Thank you for having me. Absolutely, brother. Absolutely. A bare knuckle FC superstar. Also boxing, you know, five days notice coming from a DQ. You know, uh, life comes at you fast once in a while. That's for damn sure, man. That's for damn sure. <laughs> Uh, so hit me up on that story. We, we were just hitting on it off air. I would love to hear it on air. So that's a MVP, you know, Jake Paul show was in Orlando, Florida, probably around a month ago, three weeks ago. Great show. I guess they're going to be coming back here to Florida. I guess it was a great turnout. Um, you know, I'm really happy for that because I'm, I'm a Florida guy. I live in Daytona Beach, but they called you up. Your manager called you up. Tell, tell everyone the story. Yeah, man. So uh, my manager, Shane from Gorilla Warfare, he calls me on a on a Sunday night, and I had literally just walked in the door with my daughter. I took her on a daddy-daughter date to Dairy Queen. That's had right. a double bacon cheeseburger and a and a and a, and a twister, uh, Oreo <laughs> twister. And uh, I, he had called me, and his first words are, "Hey, bro, how fat are you right now?" <laughs> and I said, uh, "Well, I just got back from Dairy Queen. Let me check." So I walk on the scale. And he's like, "All right, can you make 154 by Thursday?" And I'm like, "That's four days away." And I go, "Well, I mean, it won't be comfortable, but I can." And so, uh, yeah, man, he ends up. Uh, telling me about the show uh, in Florida. And I'm from California, so I had to fly across the country. And right. uh, yeah, man, you know, I, I ended up fighting a game opponent. He told me, you know, hey, heads up, the guy's undefeated. He's fucking tall as hell. And, you know, and so, um, uh, you know, it was a, the fight, the fight was five days away. So I had to jump on a plane in three days. Uh, unfortunately, my coach couldn't make it because it was a short notice. He already had plans. We run a full gym out here in California. So, you know, uh, my coach was like, look, man, you know, we're here to fight. You know, at the end of the day, fighters fight. So, and I stay in the gym. So it's not like I was out of shape. I'm never out of shape. And so uh, I jumped on a plane three days later. You know, I cut like nine pounds in, in three days. And, uh, you know, I fought uh, in Travis Ingram um, in Florida in, what was it, uh, Orlando? Yeah, Orlando. And, uh, you know, I flew across the country, no coach, no nothing. And, um, you know, I gave him hell for four rounds and he just fought a better fight. And, uh, you know, I lost my decision. But, you know, um, I brought the fight to him, um, and you know, even he gave me, you know, my props afterwards. And uh, you know, um, it was uh, it was a good experience. You know, I, I have only fought one other glove match. Everything's been bare knuckle the last year, so for me, I was excited just to get back in the boxing world and stay right. busy because uh, I haven't had a fight bare knuckle since uh, February, and I've been itching to fight, and I keep getting strung along. You know, I'm supposed to fight this guy on this date and this guy on this date, so. Uh, when they called, I was like, you know what? I mean, it's either I fight or I keep waiting. And, you know, I don't care who he is. I don't care if he's undefeated. I don't care if he's 6'2". Like, let's go. And, uh, you know, it was a good experience. I got to, you know, uh, meet a whole new network of fighters and promoters. And it was fun, man. That's probably the biggest lesson. That's where I was going to take it. Actually, I got two things I, I really want to go with it from there is the biggest thing is the networking of people that you met on that trip with other fighters and other managers and other promoters you just never know who you're going to meet you never know on a short notice fight a big card um i was just talking to your uh you know other people about game bread boxing on a big show you just never know where that leads into and hey i know a guy and i know a guy and you never know what the next step comes so it's just you always stay ready and you always say yes like uh that's one thing i've done in the industry is like anytime someone asks me for a job or, Hey, can you do this? I say yes. And I just keep on doing it and just keeps on taking me places. So that's for one. And then two is, uh, as me, I have two daughters of my own. Uh, I have twin girls. They're three years old. How, how old's your daughter? Uh, well, the one I just referenced, my oldest is nine. Uh, yeah. I do have a three-year-old daughter. And okay. my, son, my son will be seven in next month. And then I have a 20 year old stepdaughter and a one year old grandson, believe it or not. <laughs> so you, you're with it. You're with it. You're yeah, with I'm it. Full, okay. full house, man. Full house, full dad. Yeah, yeah. I'm with that, man. It's okay. So the three and the nine, you had to help me on the nine year old. I'm, I'm trying with the three year olds. I got yeah. a, I got a 10 year old son, six year old son. So I'm good there. We're baseball and we're, we're soccer oh, yeah. and we're basketball in the front yard. And my yeah. um, six year old son just asked me for the first time because that's all I do is I talk about fights. I watch every fight, every box, and every bare knuckle, every UFC, right? And he's like, hey, dad, can I do that? I'm like, oh, man, son, I don't know. You know, I, I, well, maybe we'll talk about it. But uh, my girls, I, I was like, I don't know if I can have, I would let them do that. So that's my question for you is would you let your daughters um, get into the world of combat sports? Oh, it's funny you say that because. Uh... 
my nine-year-old has no choice. She's I'm the boxing coach here at, at Victory Fitness at the gym in California. Yes, sir. And my theory, my theory is this: every boy and girl should know how to defend themselves. So yeah, yeah. My thing is, I will not, I do not want them to compete. I don't want my daughter getting actually in fights. Um, and she's a girl, a girl. She just made the cheer team. She's a, yeah. a dance. She does dance. Yeah, so she's yeah. a girl. She loves it. She's good at it. But. She's been boxing in the, in the class that I teach for, what, four years now? And she's yeah. good. She's good. So I want her to stay busy, to learn discipline, to learn to work yep. hard, and, again, to defend herself because, you know, every little girl uh, should know how to take care of themselves in, yeah. in this world. And then my son, I, same thing. My son, he's six. He, he loves it. He's getting after it. If he wants to compete, I'll probably let him, um, you know. Um, but as a father, I know what damage this sport brings, and so I don't want to push that on them. But – if they said, like, hey, dad, I want to compete. Well, yeah, I'll, I'll walk them through it. And if that's right. something they want to do, I'll support it. Am I going to force it? No, I'd rather they find something else to do. Like, my son wants to play soccer next, and I'm excited for that. Right. Drew, I love that, man. I do. I love that a lot. I, I totally agree. Uh, uh, definitely, like, my girls with jits. I want them to get into jiu-jitsu. I want them to be able to handle themselves. But, yeah, uh, hey, I might have to send them out to Cali into your sure. boxing class. I'll send them out sure. there. Um, all right, let's talk about you. Let's talk about Bare Knuckle FC. Yeah. Um, let's just say this. A little birdie, a little bird told me that there might be a big fight with you and someone else, and uh, they just told me to let you run with it. They told me to let you go with it. There might be an opponent. There might be a little back and forth. So they said, let me go. They let, let Drew run. So I'm like, all right, Drew, run. Yeah. So, um, uh, yeah. <laughs> um, well, here's the thing. You know, I haven't fought since February. Um, yes, sir. Uh, well, Bare Knuckle since February. Um, I'm itching to fight. Uh, I've been, you know, led to believe I was fighting this guy on this day, then this guy on this day, then this. So it's kind of like, well, at this point, I'm just going to call, you know, somebody out because I feel like if I just sit there on a wait, it's not going to happen. And there's uh, somebody that I have in mind. Uh, he's 2-0 like myself. Um, and I, I once heard him after a fight say that uh, he's here to, what is it, to drop bombs and bang moms, right? So to Kevin Kroom, if you're listening, right, bombs away, motherfucker. Um, you know, I, I've been looking forward to, you know, square dancing with that hillbilly for a while. Um, you know, like I said, he made his debut, did his thing, and said he's here to run the division. And I was like, all right, you know, and then I watched the fight again. Like, you know, I like it st stylistically. He, you know, he doesn't look like the guy that's going to run away. Um, he looks like he's dumb enough to sit there and trade with me. And uh, that's definitely a fight that I think I would have fun uh, uh, participating in. He looks like he would have fun participating in. And I think the fans would fucking love to see, you know, two, uh, you know, hardcore guys like ourselves just bang it out. So, um, Kevin Kroon, you want to drop bombs? Bombs away. Let's go. There we go. Cut it. There we go. And by the way, uh, Bare Knuckle FC, where do I pay? You know, where do I sign up and pay the money? That, that fight is absolute gold. You guys both bring it. You guys both drop bombs. You guys both bring the action. That is a must-see fight. That could be a main event fight. That could be both you guys on the poster. Uh, that's a great fight, Drew. That's a good one. That's a, I did not know that. That's a good fight. That's a great I got, fight. I got a, little, I got a little incentive for him, too. So, Kevin Crew, if you accept this fight, I'm even willing to grow out a terrible mustache like you, and then uh, the loser has to shave it. So, all right? Okay. okay. So, we got a shave off. We got a, like, uh, that's got to be a number one contender type of fight. That's a big yeah. fight. So, so, here's the position I'm in, man. Um I, I, I'm in a, in a in a in a bad position where um, I'm a high threat, but I'm no reward to a lot of these guys. So the guys in the top five aren't gonna want to jump to fight me because they know I'm not easy work, but I'm also right. not ranked. So like, why would guys like you know James Lilly or Kevin or uh, uh, Tony Solo and all these guys that are you know uh, you know where I want to be? Um, James, uh, uh, fucking Bobby Taylor, all these guys that you know I'm willing to fight um, aren't gonna just jump to fight me because you know. I mean, I get it, uh, you know, right. I'm, not, I'm not a ranked guy, and those guys want, you know, uh, title contention. So, um, you know, I feel like me and Kevin Groom makes a lot of sense. We're both 2-0. We're both undefeated. We're both bangers. Um, and, uh, you know, the fans will absolutely love it. I, I already predict fight of the year right there. So, um, anyways, after I, you know, um, get rid of him, though, then, you know, I'll be 3-0. Um, and then at that point, anybody in the top five, you know, is an absolute mandatory for me. And, Georgia, you just named a couple names. All those guys bring it. I'm just thinking it off the top of my head. That yeah. might be uh, maybe not technically or maybe not name recognition wise. It's got to be one of the most entertaining divisions in all the bare knuckle. Like that is a top end division to me. 
Yeah, I think what makes 155 such a uh, an explosive division is that it's in that sweet spot where you're they're, they're still fast, but yeah. they're also powerful, right? I, once yeah, you get yeah. below that, once you get below 155, it's all about speed, not a lot of power. And then after that, it gets you know it's all power, but it's kind of slow and they get tired, and you know so it's kind of like 55 is a sweet spot where you get speed, right. you get power, and um, you know yeah, I think it's a it's a great division, you know, and uh, it, there's a lot of good fights to be made, and uh, I'm one of them. For sure, for sure. Um, all right, so you did box three weeks ago, and I would love this because I always hear different answers. So, I, And I really respect your mindset on the game of boxing and bare knuckles, so I would love your kind of expertise in it. What is the similarities and what is the differences of bare knuckle boxing and then just straight up, you know, scientific boxing with the gloves on? What are the uh, – Big differences and what are the big similarities? Um, well, the differences are definitely uh, there is no faking bare knuckle, right? There is no um, you can't dance your way into victory. Um, you can't hide behind the gloves. There's no you know. There's a uh, it, it's what separates the men from the boys. So when people ask me what do I like more, I like bare knuckle because um, it's modern day gladiator stuff. You know, it's uh, it's 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 just you got to have that dog. You know. Um, so I, I like the bare knuckle side more. Um, uh, just like I said, it's just you know uh, I think I I actually just used the the, the audio um, of uh, Eddie Alvarez talking about it's not for the athletes, it's for the dogs. So that's what it, it's more gritty. Uh, it's definitely about you know you have to have that chin and that heart. What you can't teach with boxing, I love the fact that it is more mental and you have to have skill set. Like you can't in boxing, it's the opposite. You can't just be tough. Because you'll get, you know, outpointed, and and that 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 is a skill set in itself. You have to have the conditioning to fight to last longer. Um, you have to have the ability to outthink your opponent. You know, um, in bare knuckle, you land the right shot, fight's over. Anybody can get lucky in bare knuckle. Um, in boxing, very rarely are you going to get away with just being a dog. Uh, you have to have the ability to think, to adjust, to adapt. And uh, I've been boxing since I was 16. I'm 33 now. So to me, I love boxing. That's why I went back and did the, the fight last month. And I and I plan to get back in there again. Um, you know, if I don't fight bare knuckle for a few more months, I would like to get uh, back in the glove match. You know, whether it's another MVP fight, if I can get on a game break card, uh, I would love to do both. I want to stay busy with the gloves and then, uh, you know, keep that, uh, you know, that, that dog in me with the uh, bare knuckle. I love that, man. I love that. Hey, I'll make that phone call from you. I know the guy who uh, does that game, Brad. I'm telling you, it was a great card in Milwaukee. Like I yeah. said, I just talked to uh, Ryan, who was on that card. It was incredible. Just the show, the atmosphere of everything, and the, just the names that you're were on that Ryan card. Reaver? That was a fun thing. You're talking about Ryan um, Reaver? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Reaver, yeah. yeah. Shout out to my boy, baby. Grill again. Yeah. He's fighting the film. That's my boy right there. So Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, about, he's, he's got, got yeah. Um, he fights Travis Thompson yes, at Bare Knuckle FC 47. That's a great fight. That's a really That's good fight. I love that. that um, so you were saying, okay, so boxing, 16, 17 years. Who is someone in the sport of boxing or anywhere in combat sports? Maybe it's a UFC guy or whatever, but I would assume boxing. Who is someone that you were like a teenager, like, man, he's he's fighting on Saturday night. You know, you're going to uh, the pub to watch it or a friend's house or you were ordering the pay-per-view yourself. Who was that guy that got you to the television man, to watch my uh, boxing? Absolute, my absolute idol in boxing and legend, and I still want to meet him. If you know this guy, please set it up. But Roy Jones Jr., man. Roy Jones Jr. is yes. a legend. Uh, despite I do know how Roy. his career ended towards the end, people are like, oh, you got knocked out, man. When you talk about a whole career and what he you know, represented, Roy Jones. So if, if he hears this, that's who I want to meet, man. I, Roy Jones was, he still is my idol. Yeah. No, he is the greatest of all time. And it's funny, Roy is very close to game bread boxing yeah. and Dean Tool and all that stuff. So, yeah, uh, hey, if you're on one of those cards, you might honestly but, uh, run into Roy. That'd be cool. Stylistically, though, Mike Tyson. So, if he's listening to Mike Tyson, <laughs> you know, that, that just stylistically, I love his, uh, you know, in and out of the ring. He had the yeah. ferociousness and he was just, tena you know, tenacious and just, uh, so I like, you know, Mike's mentality and that kill dog uh you know he was but stylistically uh i like uh roy jones man he was the the, the greatest yeah, so good so good all right last thing for you drew last thing that's awesome uh, the kevin Krug thing amazing boxing uh great stuff about your daughter last thing though for you so Luis palomino i think it was last weekend yeah. won the main event uh he's had one of the greatest if not the greatest career in bare knuckle fc history 
But to be honest, it seems like it's a lot of um, drama around the main event with him kind of not going for it in a way. And and David Feldman said a lot of people were in the building, a lot of important people, and kind of even, uh, you know, the president, David Feldman, said, hey, Palomino played it safe. I would just love your take on it. If you saw it, if you heard about it, what was your take on what Lu- uh, Luis Palomino did in the main event uh, a couple weeks ago? I mean, yeah, I watched it. I uh, watched it. I, I, we all heard his post-fight interview. Uh, yep. I watched the press conference and heard uh, Feldman's take on it. You know, he said it himself. He played it safe because he didn't want to risk an injury because he was looking ahead at a bigger fight. Um, you know, that's unacceptable, you know, for obvious reasons. The fans don't pay to watch you play it safe. Um, and what's disappointing is we've seen him perform before, so it's not like we don't know what he's about. Um, right. You know, but, again, you know, I'm not his spokesperson. I don't, you know. You know, I don't give a shit what his motives are. You know, um, you know, I would have liked to see him and, and Lily go a little bit harder. Um, but, you know, Feldman's right. You know, that's not what we pay for. And uh, when you have all the eyes watching, they want to see, you know, what Bare Knuckles known for, which is that, you know, balls out fucking bloody war. And uh, lately they've been performing and delivering. So it was a little bit of a letdown, um, you know, to see that. But again, I'm not here to speak for him. I don't care what his motives are. I mean, I understand he wants a bigger fight, but who's going to want to jump to see him fight Alvarez or anybody else he called out when that fight wasn't as exciting as we would have liked and what we've seen him do in the past, you know, and that's no disrespect to him. He's done his thing before. So he should have kept that momentum going because I I personally would rather go out on my shield and and entertain the people than play it safe to a victory. Cause then people are going to be like, well, fuck this guy. I don't want to watch him, uh, you know, snooze fest again. Right. Right. Hey, no, great points, Drew. My man, it was great talking to you. Uh, let me give you the floor. Any kind of sponsors or anything you want to push and promote, I'll give you those last 30 seconds and uh, run with it, my man. Yeah, man, definitely. Uh, obviously, shout out to Guerrilla Warfare, uh, Slaughterhouse Management, Slaughterhouse Boxing. You know, shout out to Shane and, um, you know, Ryan Perez. And then uh, shout out to Barstow. I say it all the time. I'm proud of where I'm from. You know, uh, shout out to Victory Fitness, the gym I'm at, and, and you know, uh, shout out to the Savage Squad and, you know, all the other coaches that helped me. Um, you know, I just, I, I thank, uh, thank my wife for, for being the number one person on my team, you know, and just, uh, again, man, Barstow, stand up. I'm going to keep putting on for the town. Um, you know, bare knuckle, you know, quit putting me on the shelf, man. Keep me busy. The fans love to watch me fight. That's a fact. Um, and, uh, yeah, anybody that fights at 155, you know, nobody's safe. I want it with everybody. So, Kevin Kroom, you're up next, though. Let's get it. So true, man. Bare knuckle, you got to get this man a fight sooner or later. Uh, got, you know, the fans' favorite, uh, Drew Andrew Core. Hey, appreciate your time, Drew. Let's talk soon, all right? Let's not keep it. Uh, well, We're not like bare knuckle. We're not going to keep you on the shelf. You can come on anytime you want, all right, brother? Oh, God. Thank you, brother. I appreciate right, you. Brother. Appreciate you. Let's talk soon.